May I invite please the candidates for the position of Vice President and Welfare Officer to the stage please. Now there's an exceptional amount of questions. You will have 30 seconds to respond to them. Given that you're running for a sabbatical position, I'm sure you've done all the research in the world, so you will have exactly 30 seconds to respond to them. Okay, just one minute. These are welfare candidates, not education officers. <laughs> They're hired to look after your feelings, not your academic prowess. They're still debating who goes first on their surnames. We figured it out. Well done. And who is that? Me. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Catherine Keneally and I'm running for Vice President for Welfare. I believe I should be elected to this position because I genuinely believe I'm the, I'm the best person for the job. I genuinely care about the welfare of the students and if I were elected, I would strive to ensure that every student had the healthiest, happiest, best experience that they could possibly have when they come to DCU. I'm just going to take you through a few points in my manifesto. My manifesto is comprised of three main aspects, DCU community, student support and health and social policies. Under DCU community falls equality. Equality is for everyone and it's something that I would strive to do when I come to do, when I, if I do get elected. I want to be able to embrace all schools and faculties. I know that there are certain schools and faculties that have an incredibly heavy workload but that doesn't mean that they can't be involved in the SU. It's your students union and you all have a voice. I want to create, I live on campus res, I live in, in Hampstead and I want to be able to create a better rapport with res. I know that it's incredibly, that it's difficult sometimes to have a student experience when you live on campus because there's strict rules and fines in place. I want, to be able to, I want to be able to create a better relationship with Campus Res Limited so that students can still have a safe, happy, fun time without incurring any fines or anything like that with such things as events on Res for Res. Um, student support and health. I want, to be able to find that, I want to be able to make sure that students know that there is financial support there for them when they need it. Life happens outside of college and sometimes students think that it's all on them but every, the university know that things do happen and you need financial support and there are services there. I'd strive to make sure that every student knows that. Sexual health is a huge problem, is a huge, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Sexual health is something that I would strive to promote with certain weeks, shag week, and everything like that. Mental health and fitness. Mental health, I would, I would work very hard to banish any kind of taboos that surround negative mental health. It's okay to not be okay, and it's okay to talk about it. And I want every single student in DCU to know about that if I were to be elected. One minute, okay. Healthy eating. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. Healthy eating. A healthy body is really important. You can't really take on being a student without being healthy. I know everyone loves their takeaways every now and then, but I always strive to make sure that there is healthy, healthy eating options on campus when you need it. My social, policy, my social policies include facilities on campus. I know living on campus that it's difficult when spar closes and you haven't done your groceries, which I never ever do, that it's difficult to get what you need. So I want to create like an, an perishable goods kind of vending machine on campus where you can get like your noodles, um, beans, anything that you need just on a Sunday evening when you come up if you haven't done your groceries. I want to create a greener campus. It's our world, so let's take care of it. It's our campus. Let's make it as nice as possible. DCU is a fantastic university, and I want to make sure that it's kept like that. So a greener campus, sustainability, recycling, everything like that. The, every year, the SU raise an outstanding amount of money for charity, and I want to keep that going. Charity is something that I hold really, really dear to my heart. Um, our rugby this year raised an astounding eight and a half grand. I think that's absolutely fantastic, and DCU deserve a pat on the back for that, and I want to be able to keep that going and do the same again. I'd like to just emphasize again why I'd like to be elected as well for office here. I genuinely do care for everyone that I meet, all of my friends, and I will genuinely 
that I will genuinely strive to support any kind of student in any issue that they have. I will strive to make sure that their welfare is my welfare. And on Wednesday and Thursday, I'd ask you all to vote for me, Catherine, number one for welfare, because you've got a friend in me. Howie Hustings, are you well? Um, okay, so my name is Eve. I'm a final year communication studies student. I'm the current society's officer on the Students' Union Executive. And I'm going to tell you why you should be voting for me on Wednesday and Thursday. First of all, coming to college can be a very scary thing for freshers. You don't know anybody, you haven't a clue where you're going, you haven't survived alone without your family. So I want to ensure that I do class visits after Freshers' Week, visiting every single first year lecture, and giving them my email address and number, so I've spoken to each first year individually, personally, so they have built a report with me, and I hopefully think that they will be able to approach me and not feel worried about it. Secondly, um, I've been working with a lot of um, class reps and general members of different faculties, every faculty actually, and they said the one problem that people have with settling in is that they don't have time to take part in social events. I suggest that we liaise with class reps and clubs and socks to ensure that those with a heavy course load and heavy workload um, have the ability to attend events and that events are centred around their free time. Uh, secondly, mental health, which is an issue that is very relevant for the, the welfare officer. Um, Self-esteem. Every faculty has said to me as well that self-esteem is an issue that is resounding. I want to ensure that every single student feels that their time here is utilised to the absolute maximum. Um, mature students in particular have come to me and said that they don't feel that they're integrated enough. So I'd like to involve the mature society in inter-society events to ensure that they also have the best out of their time here in DCU. And a few original ideas. Um, that I'd like to introduce. One of those is called Gratitude Day. So basically what this is, I will be going around campus every single Tuesday with a morance, asking people what they're feeling grateful for that day. It can be as simple as finding a fiver or having a lecture cancelled so you can go home early. It's nice and easy and I put it up on the DCU SU website and Facebook page for people to have a listen to. Secondly, walk and talk is an idea I have. I'm already part of the Welfare Working Group. Um, I would lead these uh, once a week uh, around the Albert College Park and invite people to come and have a chat with us. Um, um, similar to Lorna's Pits and Peaks, you're allowed to discuss what's, what's making you happy that week or what's just generally pissing you off. Um, it gives people the opportunity to have a chat and c get some fresh air as well. So one of my kind of sub models is happy heads, healthy hearts. So I think that kind of brings the two of those together. With sexual health, I want to remove the stigma. I've been saying to people, if you have a sore willy, it's just the same as having a sore arm. You treat it no differently. You speak about it and you go to the doctor. It was released last week on the news that one in ten people, college students, have a sexually transmitted infection or disease. This is why we need to talk. We need to talk about our problems. We need it to be seen to like any other uh, physical health problem. Shag week. Shag week is not just about throwing around condoms and hitting penis pinatas. We need to get it back to basics. The real reason it's here, we need to discuss the issues we have. Um, I want it to still be fun, but I think it needs to be treated more seriously. We need to offer information to people who are victims of abuse, which is very relevant to, to college students. Also, um, discuss um, infections, of course, as well, and offer services for people to get free testing for sexually transmitted infections, and not just for the ones such as chlamydia and syphilis. We need to go d d delve deeper because some of these issues can go unnoticed for years. Um, also, for people called freshers, I think it's a little bit intimidating when you're given condoms and it's kind of assumed that every college student's having sex. I want people to know it's okay if you have your V-plates. Your time will come and I'll be there to talk to you until you're ready. Uh, Health and fitness, I want to incorporate clubs and socks to supply free fitness classes throughout the year. Um, I think a lot of students aren't aware that these are here. I'm going to have a column every week on the DCSU website um, detailing what's available, what's free, what people can attend. Along with that, I've been working with the health officer, Trina Keane, in releasing healthy recipes again once a week. And um, I also have a drink-free event. I've been involved in the setting up of Sober Sock. There's so many people on drinking bands and a lot of people as regard for religious reasons don't drink so a huge amount of people are being ignored their social um, requirements so I want to have events like sponsor trips to the cinema I want movie nights I want quiz nights I want to make sure that everybody's social requirements are catered for I want to promote our skills rather than abusing alcohol so, yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to skip to this. Why you should vote for me. Since first year, I've spent every spare hour bettering the life of DCU community, whether it's organising campaign weeks, choreographing musicals, promoting educational workshops. I, I have been doing everything to provide opportunities to people. I have a huge advantage uh, that's unrivaled being by sitting on the Students' Union Executive. I'm already immersed in the Welfare Working Group. I'm dedicated, innovative, caring and trustworthy. You can tell me all your secrets. That's why my hair is so big. Thank you. <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Kieran and I'm running for welfare this year. Uh, I'm a third year engineer student and um, I'm just going to tell you why I think you should uh, elect me as your welfare officer. Um, so, so for, as far as experience goes, I have extensive experience with uh, societies like snow sports, carding, etc. Um, I was also on class rep council as well, so I do have some experience in the SU. Uh, ever since first year I have wanted to get involved in the SU, but this is my chance to do it. Um, my main aim, if I was elected welfare, is to make life, day-to-day -day life easier for students so they can get the most of their time in DCU. Um, certain things like stress workshops at the, beginning of, at the beginning of the semester and just before study period for exams. Uh, a lot, of, with, a lot of students juggle part-time jobs, they juggle studying, they juggle assignments, everything that goes with it, um, as well as social life. Stress workshops and study workshops will, let them, will help them balance their life easier um, and make time for each of them accordingly so that they can pass their exams and still keep their social life going as well. Um, Another, one thing I want to, want to implement to make life easier for people who live uh, outside Dublin is a shuttle bus from um, DCU to Whitehall. It's, I only live an hour away from DCU and even for me it's annoying as hell when I miss my bus and at like 10 o'clock at night or whatever and you, you just you have to wait another hour or something for it. Um, another thing I want to implement is uh, chill out areas in the faculty buildings all around campus. Um, areas like the Mez except in your faculty buildings so that when you finish your lab or whatever you can, just go and, you can just go and relax for even a few minutes just to kind of clear your head so that you can go back and uh, hit studying harder again. Um, uh, just from a day-to-day basis things to make things easier, I want to implement uh, phone charges, phone charging stations around DCU. Um, you've all probably seen like around study time especially, um, all the statuses go up on Facebook, oh does anyone have an iPhone phone charger in the library, does anyone have this charger? It'll be a lot easier if we just had charging stations in the library and in faculty buildings so that people can just leave their phone in there little, in a little locker and then come back an hour later and fully charge them to go. Um, water fountains as well, we want to get more, want to get more water fountains around campus. Um, it's just another thing that makes it easier. It is, I know it's like one of the things that DCU complains about at other colleges, like even though it's a small college, the walk from uh, the library to uh, the hub and the Henry Grattan, everyone complains about it and it is a pain when you're in the middle of studying and you have just to go that whole walk just to get a drink of water. Um, on the event side of things, I want to uh, start a summer festival, a summer day festival rather than just a summer ball. So the summer ball is the biggest event of the year usually. Um, why don't we just keep it going all day? Uh, so have stands and acts around all, all around campus. Uh, the same kind of idea as Clubs and Socks Day. Uh, we'll get clubs and societies involved as well with demonstrations around campus. And then a couple of hours uh, rest until the actual summer ball itself, which I want to get bigger international acts for as well. Um, like we have a brilliant venue here, why not make the most of it? Like we, can, we have about six, five rooms here to keep acting, in, so make them as, as good as we possibly can. Um, on mental health side of things, um, this is one of the most important points in my manifesto. I want to get the, uh, make them more aware that there is counselling services available on campus. I also want to uh, decrease the waiting list for the counselling. Um, I don't think it's fair that if someone has the courage to go and sort their mental health issue out uh, by seeing a counsellor that they've been told they have to wait a few weeks, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I also want to raise awareness of mental health issues, so help people recognise mental health issues in their friends and in other people. They might not have the courage to go and look, go and get help themselves, which is why it makes a lot of sense to one minute, um, which is why it makes a lot of sense to teach other people to recognise mental health issues, so they can actually talk to them first and see if there is anything up. Um, I want to decrease the doctor fees back down from 20 euro to 10 euro. Um, Rag week, I want to get not necessarily get rid of it, but have different rag events throughout the year. Um, 
so that we have more of a chance to get donations going. Rag Week is very hard to implement in this college cause, just because it's a city college. So I think this will get more donations. Uh, there's more things on my manifesto, so if you read my Facebook page, you can read up on them. Um, I wouldn't make any of these promises if I didn't know that I can uh, that I can follow through with them. So vote for me for welfare on t Wednesday and Thursday, please. Thank you very much, guys. <clears throat> right. Okay, question number one, and you have 30 seconds to respond. How will you make yourself approachable to regular students? A lot of people feel that there is a click and the, uh, the sabbats aren't approachable, especially if you're in the engineering or science faculties. I thought I had 30 seconds. Okay, fine. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Um, a massive part of my manifesto is that I want to embrace all faculties. I want to make that known. I want to be able to say to all the faculties, whatever workload that they have, that they can come up and talk to me. I don't think I think that all sabbats are very approachable, and I'm a very approachable person. I always I'm always happy to sit and talk to people if they need to talk to me. Anybody from any faculty, be it engineering, nursing, I will find the time. I will work around their academic workload, and I will sit and talk to them if they need to. Um, I won't approach the faculties because I already have. Um, I've already established connections with each single faculty. Um, I'm f friends with all of the class reps. I know exactly what's going on in each faculty. I'm there for everyone already, so I don't know why I shouldn't continue to do so. Also, my idea of giving out the cards to every single fresher so they will be aware of who I am and they can contact me whenever they want. Um, being part of engineering, I do know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, when you're, for example, even for society things, there, there's no posters up in those, in, uh, those buildings. Uh, I do have, I have lectures in the nursing building as well. There's just no coverage of any, even events and things like that. So to promote events way more in those buildings um, and make sure that they know that it's not just for whatever, the humanities kind of faculty and all the other faculties. Um, and also put a po postering and videos to make sure that they know that they can just come up and t talk to me. Okay. As an active DCU's class rep, I have noticed a dis... I'll start again. As an active DCU class rep, I have noticed a disengagement of many students with student life outside of balls and a few activities of clubs and socks. If elected, how do you propose to tackle apathy that has grown over the last number of years and increase engagement? I think a brilliant way to tackle apathy these days is by using social networking. Facebook, Twitter, everything like that. People listen to you when, you, when you're on them. People look at them. If you get them shared, if you get things trending, people look at them. The SU have an amazing networking system that I would utilize to my best abilities as welfare to make sure that people get involved, do what they can, vote, whatever it is that's happening, they come to everything that they can do. Um, I think that some of the original ideas that I mentioned earlier with, would involve people who don't usually go to events. So the ideas such as Gratitude and the Walk and Talk, these happen during the day. They're not nighttime events. They allow people to get involved and be aware of who their students' union are. Um, like Catherine was saying, uh, social media, um, like and share competitions are a great way of getting... Uh, awareness of events out and also I think students that don't go to these things are normally people who are stuck in lectures all day so have a little bit of an advertisement section at the start of lectures while the lectures are setting up uh, maybe just one or two people from the SU go around the lectures and say make, the, make them aware of the events. Okay, next question. If elected, what do you plan to do to support the Irish language on campus and off campus? 
um, being an Irish and journalism student and hopefully if I get elected a graduate, um, I would certainly strive to promote the Irish language. I have done since I was in first year. I speak Irish as much as I can on campus and I would certainly assure that anything that I do would be available bilingually if requested or before it's requested. So in English, I want you, the status of Irish to change, I want posters to be in Irish, I want to um, start a Chak Na which is basically accommodation for Irish speakers. These questions are getting fun now. Um, I want to basically just include Irish uh, in every single piece of media that goes out. Um, there's no reason why they can't, like, a poster can't just be made of English and then have the Irish written under it, like all of our road signs and like everything else we have in Ireland. So. Castella. <laughs> Each of the candidates mentions prioritising mental health. What, in your belief, is the most effective way you can achieve this? In my opinion, the best way to achieve positive mental health on campus is by, is by banishing all taboos that surround it. People are, people, some people might be embarrassed that they're not okay, but like I said in my manifesto, it's okay to not be okay. People need to know that. People need to talk. I will assure that people do. I think an open door policy is obviously one of the most important things. I'm there to be utilised, I'm there to offer information, to give support. I will never give advice, I will only ever offer you the different options that are available to you. Also, I think inter-society events are crucial in getting rid of mental issues, not getting rid of mental issues, but um, helping us delve into these issues and solve them hopefully together through fun activities. Uh, we need to make sure everyone knows it's okay to have mental health issues. As I was saying earlier on, uh, we also need to help people recognise mental health issues in their friends and in other individuals so that they can go maybe point them in the right direction to go get help as well as maybe point them in my, if they point in my direction, I can tell them exactly where to go, go to the counsellor in uh, the ECU which will have reduced waiting times if I get elected. <laughs> Now we get into the questions that are like Russian roulette. <laughs> How does your involvement with the Students' Union, if any, set you aside from the other candidate for the role of Welfare Officer? Um, I've been involved with the Students' Union since I started college here. Uh, my main involvement this year was during Rag Week. I was one of the bride huns in the mock wedding, which helped raise uh, over 8,000 euro for, the, uh, for the, all the charities in DCU. Um, I am constantly sharing their events on Facebook and making sure that people know that the SU are there, so that when I am hopefully in position next year, people will know that I'm there. Thank you. As a current member of the Students' Union Executive, I feel that my experience goes unrivaled to my other candidates. I established a Clubs and Societies Information Day at the beginning of the year with Kenneth, the Clubs Officer, and I think that my entire time spent here has contributed massively to the students' community, and that's why I think that my position would benefit me. Um, I think the fact that I haven't been involved much in the SU uh, stands to me as I can bring a fresh uh, view on things to everyone. Um, I've been looking at the SU from an outside point of view all these years. Uh, in my opinion, it is quite, a little, it, quite clicky. I, want, I would strive to take that uh, barrier down between the SU and the students. <clears throat> Given the recent decision of DCU students to reaffiliate the USI, Outline your plans for the year ahead in that regard. Sound lads. Um, I would do everything that the SU would. I would stand with the DCU stance on everything as well for officer. I wouldn't. I would let my own personal opinions. I wouldn't let them affect anything that I need to do as well for officer. I would go to conferences. I would do what I have to do that DCU, SU, and the students would want me to do. 
Um, I think that USI affiliation is the most important for the welfare officer in that they help us with campaign materials, they help us organise protests, t-shirts, posters, whatever. I think that I will benefit the most as welfare officer um, with the USI affiliation. I want to make sure students know that they can come to me to, to voice their concerns. That will actually, they're on their pathway into the into US, USI, so that uh, I can be a spokesperson for them and carry through any of their any of their thoughts or feelings into the U, USI and get them implemented. Everybody managed to avoid answering that question. Happy days. Okay, moving swiftly on. How would you empathise with a student who has a personal issue? Um, as a student, I would emphasise very. I would emphasise excellently with students who had an issue. As every student has issues, I've been through things myself. I'm able to see where people are coming from and I would also facilitate them as best I could in any way. Once again I'll put my personal views aside, I'll facilitate them in anything they need and if an answer isn't there I will create one with them because sometimes you can't find an answer, you just have to make one. Um, I think empathy means that you know how the other person feels. We don't know how that person's feeling. All I can do is offer all available counselling services and resources that are available. So I would offer support. I would not empathise because I don't know how they feel. As a welfare officer, I'd make it clear to them uh, all of the options available to them on campus or off campus uh, and do anything in my power to actually uh, come to a resolution to their problem. Um, as Eve said, and I agree with it, I don't know exactly how they feel unless I've been through it with them myself, which is very unlikely. So um, there's no point in saying I can cure their problem, but I know exactly I can point them in the right direction to fix it for them. A pointed question next, but I'll allow it. One of the candidates mentioned uh, looking to seek to reduce the doctor rate from 20 euro to 10 euro. Given that the health service was this year faced with increasing the charge to students or reducing that, uh, the amount of doctors that were available, I can't read your writing, so I'm like winging this. Yeah. Um, reduce the doctor on campus to a three day week. Is it, well, I, can't, I cannot read the writing of whoever this is. Sorry. This is a scroll. Have I got the gist of it? So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so to clarify, the question is with the statement at the beginning if it didn't cost 20 euro now, the, there would have been a reduction in the, the days that the doctors were available on campus to three days a week. Where would you propose to find the additional finances needed to reduce it from 20 euro to 10 euro? As you said, it appeared to be a bit of a pointed question, but I'll do my best with it. Um, this is something that I will investigate. I understand that these people are here to help students, so they're not doing this to be, to be spiteful. There's a reason that they're doing it, and if it was a matter of investigating it and then communicating with them, I'm sure there could be a, a positive outcome to it. But as I said, they're not doing it to spite students. It's not more expensive just because it could be. It's expensive because it has to be. If it's investigated and communicated with me as well for officer, I will do my best to do the best for every student. Um, personally, I think I would be in favour of having the doctors open three days a week at a 10 euro because students don't need it. It's not a daily requirement. I think it's maybe monthly or bi-monthly. So I would be more in favour of 10 euro every three days. And as well for officer, also I will definitely investigate any means that we can reduce the fee because I think the reason that it's only 10 euro is students can't afford to go to the doctor. So I will try my best to keep it that way. 
Um, having been involved in an event organisation um, for quite a, quite a few large events um, inside and outside campus, I know how profitable they can be. Um, there's no reason why we can't move funding, move profit from those uh, events to fund our uh, healthcare. I don't agree with taking them down to three days. But I also don't agree with it being 20 euro. That 10 euro could be the difference between someone getting a mo what they see as a minor problem checked out and having it go unnoticed. So I don't want to compromise on this at all. I want to. F I will do my best to find funding for it. Before I go on, apologies to Karen. I thought it was your question because there's your name written on the top of it. <laughs> now I'm going to ask a question. As a former four-term sabbatical officer, I know exactly what it's like to be a sabbatical officer in the Students' Union. I know exactly what it's like to get heartbreaking stories coming to your door. What support mechanisms do you have in your life to deal with a heartbreak that will come to your door? That's why they call me the bastard. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Um... I'm sorry, I don't fully understand the question. You're asking me what support systems we have at home. Where okay. Yeah, um, I totally agree. Uh, support systems is very important, and when you are a support system for people, as I will strive to be for students as well, for officer, a support system for them. I have a fantastic support system. I have a very close group of friends who will support me through anything. They're supporting me now through this campaign. I have a fantastic family at home. <laughs> who will support me through anything as well. I've been through things in my life. They've supported me, and I would strive to do that for anyone else that I can do if I become welfare officer. Um, I think personally I've been very blessed with a very close-knit um, group of friends and family of a wonderful support system. Um, I think I'd like to take from them the opportunities that they've given me and the support they've given me and hopefully be that person to somebody else. Even if it's a stranger, I'll make myself not be a stranger. I will offer everything to them so I can be their support. Um, I've actually got a large support group that like, will just support me through anything, um, through societies actually, which proves that just because there's uh, thousands of members or whatever, it doesn't mean that you can't uh, get support from them just the same as you would get from your close friends. So if I was elected welfare officer, I'd pull the campus together so that we'd feel that we'd feel we could go to each other with, with our problems. Student unions' positions are awful, th often thankless jobs, um, and I know from experience in my now 14 years involved in student politics, um, it's very important that people realise that when you're a position such as a uh, welfare officer, that it chips at you. It chips at you a lot. So it's very brave for people to run for the position of welfare officer. It's very brave for a person to f finish the role of welfare officer. It's a very difficult job. And I'd like to thank all the candidates for participating, and I'd like to thank them for their bravery. Uh, thank you very much.